Sup all you cool cats and... Nope, that's not it. Sup all you WordPress nerds. In this video, I'm gonna be going over how much you should charge for a freelance client. Now, this is gonna be mostly guidelines that I typically follow, so they're my opinion on how things should go. But I've done freelance for a little bit now, and I wanted to impart some of the things that I do because I found that they worked out pretty well for me. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you get notified of my weekly WordPress videos. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so again, these are things that I have found helpful to me over the years of doing freelance. Um, I do it part-time. This is not like a full-time thing that I do. I have a nine to five job. So any freelance that I do is after hours. So I hope that you can take some of this stuff and apply it to full-time work. But for now, I'm gonna look through it through my own lens and hopefully you can find something helpful out of here. Um, so yeah, kind of like I said at the beginning, we we're going to be taking a look at how much you should charge for a freelance project, some things to look for, as well as how to go about charging your client for that. And that'll make a little bit more sense here in a second. So we're going to set up the payment structure. So how much to charge and what goes into that, and then how to plan for those costs as they come in. Um, and then how to set up a payment schedule once you are kind of in the mix of it, the estimate has been accepted, all that kind of stuff. So first and foremost, we should be charging the client by project and not by the hour. So the reason why I think that's important is that gives you um, a couple of tools that allow you to pay for your experience and not just by making your hourly rate higher. Um, it also gives the client a very nice uh, estimate to take back to whoever needs to approve that uh, the cost of the project. So it's gonna be much nicer for them to say, this site is gonna cost $6,000 versus the guy who wants to work with us says he'll charge a hundred bucks an hour. And so to the finance person, that makes a lot more sense to say like, oh, I'm going to be spending $6,000 on this project versus who knows how much I'm going to be spending on this project, but it's going to be about a hundred bucks an hour. So there's a lot more questions there. So if you can figure out how much you can charge for that project ahead of time, not only are you going to be able to get more clients, you're also going to be able to um, charge more what you're worth um, versus just having your butt in a seat um, and charging by the hour. Some people like to charge by the hour. I like to charge by, a pro by the project and it's worked out well for me. Um, so here's um, kind of the meat of what I wanna talk about is, so you're presented, somebody sends you an email and say, hey, I'd like you to work on this. Um, what's your estimate for this project? There's some things that you probably should consider and some things that you need to ask about. First and foremost is, do they have a design and can you see it? Uh, many times when they come to you, they've already got that figured out. They're just looking for a developer. So you need to be able to look at the design as long as there's nothing like, you, you might have to sign an NDA, I guess. Um, in some cases, I've never had to do that, but if they will send you pieces of the design. And why is that helpful? Because it helps you understand the design element of the site. You're going to be able to kind of get a bird's eye view of what they're expecting. Is it complicated design elements? Are there mp4s or like principal documents that show you how you know animations are going to be all that stuff should factor into how much time you're thinking this site is going to take um, what apis do they need integrated there's all sorts of things that could go out there like if they're running a car site you're going to need to be able to uh, query um, vin numbers and stuff like that you're going to need to know if they need that happening or if they need to have it um, integrate with like a CRM, a client relation management thing. Um, so like HubSpot or any other custom thing that they might have going on. Um, I kind of encapsulate the next couple of things into web app features, which is just kind of stuff that you're not gonna find on just kind of like a brochure site. Like if you're doing like a recipe site and people can need to be able to log in and have like a dashboard and have a profile page and like, be able to save other people's posts and stuff like that and be able to generate their own content. I kind of encapsulate that into web app features 
and that's such like a black box of like you need to kind of have experience in those fields in order to know how much time it's going to take um, but yeah you're going to need to know whether or not they're expecting web app features um, a tight deadline is also something you should very much charge for um, i would say anywhere between 10 and 25 percent extra for a tight deadline and the tighter the deadline the higher the percentage so definitely ask about that email management in my opinion is a nightmare i hate it so i charge extra for that that is something that can get very out of hand and very very messy depending on uh, how they have their stuff set up already if they have it set up at all hosting sometimes they have it figured out sometimes they don't sometimes they have their site already hosted or you know that's something that you are going to have to figure out and how the billing for that is going to be it's definitely a sticky situation you're going to want to consider that when you're estimating your cost um, any premium plugins or tools that you're going to have to purchase um, if you're working with wordpress or something like that sometimes you need to buy plugins to get the thing working that they expect to have it to work uh, they're going to need you're going to need to buy plugins in order to get it working sometimes so uh, definitely think about that ahead of time or if they already have something in mind um, definitely research that um, any sort of training that you're going to have to do once uh, the site is live, maybe you're going to be handing it off to an in-house team where they have their team of developers and you're going to need to sit there and run them through the code base. Or if you're working with a content management system, you're going to need to be able to train whoever is going to be inputting the content. Um, so you're going to need to think about that when you're jumping it, when you're estimating your time. Are you going to be jumping into someone else's code? It's happened to me where... I find out that the they had a previous freelancer who abandoned the project and they want you to pick up where he left off. Charge extra for that because that's going to be a nightmare. Um, jumping into someone else's code is never fun. Um, will you be able to recycle some of your own code from a previous project? And this one's kind of interesting because this could either reduce how much the 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 uh, the the estimate or it could increase it kind of like rewarding yourself for you know being efficient and and having that kind of stuff ready to go i'd not increase the project and the t the amount you would charge but you could either leave it the same to accomplish that same amount of work or you could reduce it and that's that's how i would do it i would maybe reduce it a little bit will you be integrating the project with the cms and that is something you should charge extra for now all of a sudden you're having to um, input not only the front facing um, what's what's happening to the user, but you're also going to have to create an, an interface for the people who will be into um, managing the content. So in WordPress, you're going to be having to create like a drag and drop builder, integrating one, or you're going to have to be using something like advanced custom fields. And that all takes extra work. So you should charge for extra work. Will you need to hire somebody? So let's say to the, the, the first thing um, on this list, do they have a design is, is no. Uh, and are they expecting you as the developer to go out and find somebody? Are they looking for photography? Are they looking for content? You're going to have to hire extra people if they need that. So are, are, you looking, are they looking to you to manage all of that? You're kind of a business versus a developer now um, or a, like an agency, but that's something that you should at least ask um, when you're estimating the, the time cost. So you're going to sit there and you're going to take down all of these items and see how much time it's going to um, time it's going to cost you. So break it down into hours, because I think that's the most effective way to estimate the total cost. Um, and then calculate that by your hourly rate that you are charging them um, by what hourly rate um, here's some guidelines that i like to follow um, and don't be confused by when i'm talking about hourly rate right now because um, i'm gonna make a point here in a second so it'll all pay off here in a second take those hour hours and calculate them by an hourly rate if you have a full-time job take your hourly rate and double it at the very least um, you're going to be working after hours on this, obviously weekends in your normal job, you would be getting paid time, time and, or time and a half to double time in some cases. In this case, I think you should give yourself at least double time. 
um, sometimes two and a half times. So I would strongly consider that. Um, if you don't have a full-time job and you're looking just into the following, here's a couple numbers that I'm gonna throw out to you. Again, this I have a full-time job, so what I normally do is I take my hourly rate and I double it. That It's very simple for me, uh, and it's something that's worked out very well, but if you're just doing full-time freelance, here's some numbers that I would throw your way between junior, mid, and senior level. Now, senior level can scale near infinitely, so it depends on how many years experience you have, but I would at least start at 100 bucks an hour. So you should now have a number, but that number should be flexible. So that number can change. Now that you have taken how many hours you think this is going to cost and how much that number should be times by, that's not going to be the end of it. There is going to be hiccups and all this kind of stuff. And so there should be some sort of information inside of your estimate that says that this number can change. Um, and the reason why this number can change could be some of these things that we saw um, in the in the in the initial um, slide that had all those bullet points and you know they're going to do their best to um, get you a breakdown of all the things that they're going to need however um, clients are are have can have uh, the best of intentions but they could still forget things so you could get like 90 through or 50 percent through a project and all of a sudden there's an api integration and that you find out about well, you can't just eat that cost. You need to be able to change how much your estimate is going to be. Maybe even since we're not charging by the hour, you can say, well, this in your head, you can say, well, this is going to take me an extra 15 hours to create. Well, I'm going to sit there and say, well, it's going to be, you know, 20 hours and I'm going to times that by my hourly rate and then estimate that project um, and then give that as my estimate for that. So without exposing your hourly rate, you're gonna be charging by project. So these are some things that, I mean, this is a screenshot from an email that I sent out to a client uh, recently. So these are things that when I was giving an estimate, things that I listed that could change the number of my estimate. So this can kind of fall into place either while you're actually working on the project or it can happen you know, any time between when you send your initial estimate and the kickoff of the project. So how should I charge my estimate? You should always charge with a milestone structure. And I talked about this a little bit in a previous video. Um, and I think it's rep worth repeating because milestone is, in my opinion, the only way to charge for a freelance project because what's going to happen is there is going, if you charge all up front or all at the end, you set yourself up to lose out on control of the project. If you charge all up front, you're going to, yay, I got all my money right now. Like I'm solid. Like, you know, the rest is, is gold. However, that makes it very easy for the, for the client to sneak in and scope creep the project. So if they all of a sudden have an extra API integration, they're going to expect you to just take care of it because they paid you all this money up front. If you charge all at the end, they're gonna, you, they can scope creep it throughout, throughout and that makes it a difficult conversation at the end where it's like, hey, you know what? I did all these extra things. I need more money than I originally asked you for. It could be a difficult conversation. Same with you know half up front, half at the end. You now have this giant gap and sometimes it's really easy to get your money up front and really difficult to be at the end because now all of a sudden there's these iterations and things like that. So I always, always, always charge by milestone. And so what does that look like? Here's kind of a little example. Now this is wildly var variable, but you need to get a payment after every single milestone that you establish because two reasons. Number one is that it requires you and the client to be on the same page as to what the deliverables are for that project. And number two is it cons it consistently pays you. It makes it easy for you to re ask for money and it makes it easy for the client to pay you money because you're on a consistent schedule with it. It's really hard to give up the large chunks of cash um, at the beginning and or the end. However, it's much easier to do kind of a trickle system. So I have a demonstrable thing that I completed. 
I'm going to show the client and then they are going to pay me for that. So for this example, milestone one is I did the header, the, fo the footer and the homepage because that implies that I set up my local environment. I got all the styles and the design system set up. I've got basic coverage for a working page. That's a milestone. You should get one fifth in this case of the, of the project. Now milestone two, same thing, another chunk of changes, and then you show the client, then you get paid for that work. And then you continue that all the way down the line until the last milestone, which is launch. You launch the site, it's live, and then you get an, your final paycheck. That's in my mind, the best way to do it. So I strongly encourage you to consider that when you're thinking about charging for um, a freelance project. But long story short, these are some guidelines that I have set for myself and hopefully they can help you out when it comes to thinking about how to charge your client um, the next time around. So um, always think about your um, project goals, what's going to go into the project, figure out how much time that's going to cost you, um, multiply that by your hourly rate, and expose that final number to your client and then work from there. Your, that number should be flexible in case anything comes up and let the client know that obviously, put that into a contract somewhere and then finally charge that number divided by your milestones. And I think that if you follow that, everyone's gonna be happy. You're gonna have a much smoother project overall. So anyway, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. Let me know if you would have any other guidelines that you would add to this list, or if you just want to say something nice or something like that, um, go for it. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you to my lovely patrons who have been supporting the channel. Um, if you want to support the channel, um, there's a link below to my Patreon. And as soon as we hit a goal, I'm going to be start to post exclusive content there. So consider that if you will. All right. Thanks guys for watching. Again, I appreciate the support and I will see you in the next one.